Welcome to Spirit of God Fellowship. We are so glad that you could be with us this morning on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. And this is the first of a two-part Christmas message. We hope that you can hang around with us next week. We have a really, really special Christmas service, uh, one that you can bring anybody to. It's going to be fantastic. But as we get started this morning, um, I wonder how many of us have seen that old TV show that comes around every Christmas time, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, right? Now that show is, is over 50 years old now. You know, it's got, I think they called it clay, claymation or clay motion, something like that. And, and you know, there, it, it's this great thing and it's been, it's been literally around for over 50 years now. Uh, here's to a holly jolly Christmas, right? So think, speaking of holly jolly and joy, um, kids are all about the joy of Christmas, right? So I, I love this picture. This is one of my favorite pictures. These are some kids revealing the joy of Christmas. Go, there we go. How many of you have some of those? A Christmas morning, right? There you go. So Christmas. Christmas is about miracles. How many of you know we need miracles? Dan, I appreciate that opening song. A miracle could happen here. It could. It does. It will. Christmas is about miracles, and miracles are about what brings us hope, and we need hope. We need it. I don't care if you've never stepped foot in a church before, or if you've been here all your life, we can agree, we need hope. We can live 40 days without food. We can live eight days without water. We can live four minutes without air, but we can only live a few seconds without hope. Amen? It's true. But because of Christmas, we have hope. And so that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. Hope. Christmas miracles. And then next week is about because of the fact of Christmas, we don't have to be afraid. And so it's Christmas time and all the, the movies are on, you know, uh, those, those, those great inspirational classics like Elf and, uh, you know, and Jingle All the Way. And I'm sure we've all watched Christmas Vacation, these inspiring movies that we all have around Christmas time. And, 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 you know, Starbucks has got their coffee cups with the Christmas stuff, and, and it's all here, but you know what? Uh, not everyone here this morning is having a holly jolly Christmas. I, I'm preaching to myself this morning. The older I get, the harder it is to get into that Christmas spirit. And it's, it's, it's difficult for, for some that are here this morning, this is going to be a blue Christmas. It's a Christmas because we've lost loved ones this year. Or maybe our loved ones are not here with us. So for some, it's not a holly jolly Christmas. It's, it's a blue Christmas. And Joseph and Mary, the parents of Jesus, they weren't having a holly jolly Christmas either. I can assure you that first Christmas. It wasn't holly and jolly for them. There's a, a scene that is shown on many Christmas cards. I want to put it up on the screen. Maybe this looks from, yeah, there we go. You've seen that scene before, right? Doesn't that look Christmassy? See the, the star and it's so peaceful and there Joseph is leading Mary through the desert and it's just this great scene. But you know what we... We, we don't seem to think about when we see that. What we don't think about is the fact that that's a nine-month pregnant woman on a donkey. That 
is Joseph and Mary not home with their family? Joseph and Mary are a very poor couple, and they're having a baby out of wedlock in a foreign land. We don't think about that stuff. And they've probably traveled 80 miles, Mary, nine months on a donkey to have their baby in a barn where nobody is there to witness this blessed event from their family. The only people around are some shepherds and some animals. <laughs> Mary and Joseph, Joseph and Mary are not having a holly jolly Christmas. Joseph and Mary need a miracle to bring them hope on that Christmas. And maybe you walked in this morning and you're saying, hey, where's my holly jolly Christmas? I I'm here. Where is it? For some of us, Christmas is hard. And, and Christmas is about waiting isn't it? Especially when we're kids. I, I, I'm sure we all remember back when we were kids, we, we could hardly sleep Christmas Eve. We, we could hardly wait to open our presents. We could hardly wait to see what Santa brought us in our stockings. But waiting as we get older gets harder, doesn't it? As adults, the waiting gets harder. And, and as adults, the waiting goes way beyond Christmas. You might be here this morning as an adult, and you're waiting. You're waiting for someone to share your life with. You're waiting. You say, Lord, wh wh where is that person? Where is that man? Where is that woman? Maybe you're here this morning, and you're waiting for that baby that you've been praying for for so long. Maybe you're here this morning, and you're, waiting for that job that you need. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning and you're waiting for that prodigal child to come home. You're waiting. And, and when we have to wait for long periods of time as adults, sometimes we get fearful and sometimes we become hopeless. That, that's what where some of us are at this morning. So that's my message this morning. It's, it's about waiting. It's about waiting. It's about a message from God, and it's about hope. And so we're going we're to talk about Luke 1 this morning, and then next week we're going to talk about Luke 2. Luke 2 is the classic Christmas chapter. Everybody knows Luke 2. We'll go to that next week. But I think Christmas begins Luke 1. I would encourage you this week to read Luke 1. I'd encourage you to read Luke 2. It, it, it's just a great couple chapters in the Bible to read as we prepare and continue this Christmas season. I'm not going to ask you to turn there this morning. I'm just going to tell you the story, or at least half of the story of of Luke 1, because Luke 1 is about this wonderful couple, this wonderful couple that has been waiting a long time for hope. They've had hopelessness in their life for a long time, and this wonderful couple needs a Christmas miracle. That's the story of Luke 1. Zechariah is a Jewish priest. He's He's, he's one of many Jewish priests that are ministering in, in the temple back in Luke 1, back at that time in, in the New Testament. And Zechariah has a wife, and his wife, her name is Elizabeth. And Elizabeth has a great family line. She's got great DNA. Elizabeth um, is a descendant of Aaron, who was the brother of Moses. Elizabeth is the cousin of Mary, the one who will be the mother of Jesus. She had a great DNA. She, they both had great family trees, if you will. And Zechariah and Elizabeth are very righteous people. 
They're godly people. They obeyed all of God's commandments, but they had no children. Elizabeth is barren. Elizabeth can't conceive. And they were both very old. Most historians agree that Elizabeth and Zechariah were married at the ripe old age of 14 years old. That's when folks got married back then. And also, most historians agree that this story in Luke 1 was written over 40 years later. So, so Zechariah and Elizabeth were probably in their 50s, and they're old, and they aren't having any children as of yet. And that's significant also because back then, if you had no children, you were looked at as you were cursed by God. It's amazing, but it's true. If you had children, you were blessed of God. If you didn't have children, you were cursed. Zechariah and Elizabeth were not having a holly jolly Christmas. So here's the first thing I want us to see this morning. Zechariah is a priest. Elizabeth comes from a great family line. They were righteous, godly people. It's important that you see that. And Luke 1 goes to great lengths. Luke 1 makes it very clear that the fact that they didn't have a baby was not because of something they did wrong. Luke 1 points that out. Because you know what religion does. Religion kind of puts it out there that if you're bad and you're on the naughty list, then bad things are going to happen to you. And, and, you know, religion kind of lays it out there sometimes that if you're good and you live a good life and you're a good person, well, good things are going to happen to you. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that think if I'm a good person and I follow all the rules, God's going to give me money, God's going to give me health, and God's going to give me wonderful kids. How many of you know that doesn't happen all the time? Oh, I can get an amen on that one for all three. Not speaking about that personally. I have wonderful kids. But it happens, right? We all think about that stuff, right? That's not how it works. Somebody forgot to tell Jesus that if you live a good life, everything's going to go well with you. Jesus was sinless. Jesus was the son of God, the king of kings. He came to earth to be born so that we might have eternal life. But Jesus lived a tough life. Jesus had no money. And then Jesus died on a cross for you and I. Somebody forgot to tell the disciples that if you live a good life, good things are going to happen to you. Well, the disciples were kind of wonky people there before Jesus. You know, they were, they were fishermen and tax collectors and all kinds of things. They weren't living the, the real godly life. But then Jesus called them. And these guys left everything behind. You hear me? Everything. And they followed Jesus. They were good, godly men. But the disciples, all of them, were martyred. They lived, they died horrible deaths, except for one. That was John. And he was, 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 dest uh, he was exiled to an island for the rest of his life. But listen, my point is this. Here's my point. Even if you do everything right, even if you follow all the rules, just like Zechariah and Elizabeth, even if you live it the godly way, guess what? You still might not have that child that you've been praying for you still might get sick. You still might get depressed. You still might be broke. You still might have to wait. Even if you do it right, we, we might have to wait for hope. We might have to wait for that Christmas miracle, and we're going to get to that. I don't know. I'm sure that Elizabeth felt useless and flawed. I'm sure Elizabeth felt like, like she had done something wrong. Elizabeth needed a Christmas miracle, didn't she? She needed hope to come into the many, many years of hopelessness that she had 
lived in. Now, Zechariah, same guy, Elizabeth's husband, he's feeling cursed too, right? And he's a priest. And, 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 and so Zechariah gets chosen by a lottery to go into the holy place, to go into the sanctuary of the Lord, to burn incense, because that was the tradition back then. Once a year, they would choose a priest to go in and burn incense, and then hopefully God would speak, and they would come out and, and give a, that message to, to the people, to the Jews that are waiting to hear from God. Well, God hadn't spoken, I think, in three or 400 years, but, you know, they always sent that priest in there. It was a tradition. It was a once-in-a-lifetime deal. This is a big deal. Now, this is not in the Bible, friends. This is, it, it, and I, because I don't know what Zechariah was thinking. This is what I'm thinking. If I were him, I'd be thinking, oh, great. People are looking at me like I'm cursed. I'm going to go into the holy place. I'm going to burn incense here from God and, and tell them a word from God. I don't even know if I believe in this stuff. Now, that's me. That's my thinking. That's what I'd be thinking. If I were Zechariah, I'd be saying this. I'd be saying, God, are you kidding me? I did it right. I followed all of your rules. I, I lived a godly life. If you're real, God, just give me a child. Zechariah needed a Christmas miracle. Zechariah needed some hope in the hopelessness of his life. And there's some here this morning, you might be thinking, you know what? This is a tough season. For some here this morning, it might not be going very well. You might be waiting for hope. You might have been waiting for a long time. You might need that Christmas miracle, just like Zachariah and Elizabeth and Joseph and Mary. But I want you to know something this morning. God's got a message for you, and it is good news. It's good news. Now, Zechariah goes into the sanctuary, into the holy place, into, into the presence of the Lord to burn incense, and an angel appears. Can you, can you imagine what that must have been like? I mean, this angel is right in front of him. Gabriel, and the Bible says that Zechariah was afraid. That's the understatement of the year. I mean, he was freaked out. But the angel says to Zechariah, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. That's part of the good news for you this morning. Don't be afraid. Your prayers have have been heard. I'm saying that to you. Your prayers have been heard. But, you know, we all get afraid sometimes. There's this great story. I love this story. Little Johnny sitting by the table with his mother. And his mother says to Johnny, hey, Johnny, go out to the shed and uh, get me a broom because I, I need to clean up after dinner. And little Johnny says, no, mom, I can't go out there. It's dark out there. It's scary out there. I I can't go out there. And then mom pulls out the Christian mom card and says, Johnny, Jesus is with you everywhere you go. You know that mom card. He's with you everywhere you go. You don't have to be afraid. He's with you. Johnny says, he's with me everywhere. Mom says, yes, he's with you everywhere. And so Johnny goes to the door and he says, hey, Jesus, if you're out there, go to the, go to the, go and get me that broom, please. Who can fault Zechariah for being afraid? Because when angels showed up, they were awesome beings. Awesome. They weren't these little angel ornaments on a tree. They weren't these uh, stuffed angel things with halos attached to them. You know, the angels that showed up in this time and the angels that show up aren't like Clarence from It's a Wonderful Life having a drink at the bar or whatever he was doing in that movie. You don't remember Clarence, right? No, angels. 
were intimidating. Angels were powerful. And they were so important to this first Christmas story. And they're so important to our Christmas story. And you're going to think I'm crazy when I say this to you. But angels are here this morning, I'm telling you. They're here. They are. And God sends us angels. Oh, yes, he does. He sends us angels. And they're warriors. And they're fighting spiritual battles for us. And they're protecting us. And they appeared to Zechariah. And they appeared to Joseph and Mary. And they appeared to the shepherds. And they're here this morning. They are all around us. Sometimes we don't know that they're around us, but I'm telling you, they are. And if you don't believe me, think about your lives. Again, I want to make this statement. I, I don't care if this is the first time in a church. I welcome you. We're so glad that you're here. I don't care if you know the Lord or you don't know the Lord. You're searching, you're seeking. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what condition you're in this morning. I want to say this to you. Think about your life. Think about those times that you could have died. Think about those times that you could have been killed. Think about those times you were protected in that car accident. Think about those times that your kids were magically, mysteriously protected. No, every single one of us has a guardian angel. Can I get an amen to that? We do. We do. Guardian angels. There's a Christian artist, Ron D. Ciani. He, he, he has a great painting. Go ahead and put that one up. You've seen this one before? Oh, man. I don't know if you could see, but in the, in the background there, there's an angel outside the window. I love that picture. Moms, dads, don't think for one second that when you're praying for your kids that there aren't angels all around you. Hebrews says it this way. Hebrews 13, verse 2. It says, do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. It's true. There's angels. You may have met an angel and you didn't know you met an angel. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Let me summarize this thing real quick. Let me summarize it, and then we'll close this morning. Luke 1. Zechariah and Elizabeth are old. Zechariah and Elizabeth have been faithful to God. They've, they've followed all the rules. Zechariah and Elizabeth have waited many years for hope. They've wait, made it, waited many years for their Christmas miracle, just like some of us here this morning have been waiting many years for hope. Some of us here this morning are waiting for our Christmas miracle. We're going to see it. We're going to get it. Some of us have been waiting. That's the story or the first half of Luke 1. And then the angel comes and gives a message to Zechariah, and that message is, I've heard your prayers. That's part of this Christmas message to you. Every single one of you, listen to me. I want to say this to you. God has heard your prayers. Is that good news? It's good news. And this is so important. Listen quickly to what happens. Paul, go ahead and put up that last scripture. And Zechariah asked the angels, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. I love that. Here the angel comes and gives this good news, right? You're going you're gonna to have a son and all this stuff. And, and, and Zechariah says, have you seen my wife? <laughs> Do you know who you're looking at here? Gabriel. Verse 19 the angel answered, oh, I'm 
Gabriel. Now, there's so much in that statement. I don't know that. I don't know what angels think, but I think angels. I think Gabriel wanted to say, "I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news." Zechariah doubts. He doesn't believe, and because of that, he's not able to speak until his child is born. But that's a whole different message. Gabriel gave them good news. They were going to have a son. But listen, this is important. They still had to wait. They still had to wait. But because of this message, they had hope. I, I want to encourage you this morning. Some of us have been waiting a long time. We need Christmas miracle. You still might have to wait. But God says, I've heard your prayers. God says, I've sent you angels. And then nine months later, the waiting is over, and Elizabeth has a son, and they name him John. Oh, you might have heard of him. He goes by another name, John the Baptist. Miracle. The one who prepared the way for Jesus, the one who baptized Jesus. What a miracle. And God does miracles. I've got a question for you this morning. Do you still believe? Got a question for you this morning. Do you believe in miracles? Yes, we do, but sometimes it's hard because we've been waiting so long. What we need to do, friends, we need to open our hearts this morning. It's my message this morning. We need to open our hearts to the fact that God has heard your prayers and he is giving you hope and he wants to give you a Christmas miracle. But we need to open our hearts to that. We need to be open to receive the message of hope. We have to be careful not to doubt. We have to believe. I want to I say one more thing about those angels. Those angels, God's messengers, whenever they appeared, and whenever they appear, they always point the recipient to Jesus. Whatever their message, they always pointed to Jesus. Well, I'm not Gabriel. I'm sure we can agree I'm no angel. I'm just a flawed man. Paul, oh, very short, screw up many times. But I stand in the presence of the Lord this morning. And I've got a message for you. It's good news. If you're brokenhearted, look to Jesus. I'm going to point you to Jesus because he'll heal your broken heart. I promise you. You may have to wait, but he'll heal your broken heart, if you're discouraged, if you're depressed, if you're lonely, if you're anxious. I, I want to point you to Jesus this morning. Oh, it sounds so simple. You Maybe some say, oh, it should be deeper than that. There should be steps. No, no, not for this morning. We'll get deeper next week. This morning, I've got good news for you. Look to Jesus. He'll, he'll, he'll walk you through. If you're here this morning, and you're missing loved ones. I'm telling you, look to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. I promise you, you may have to wait, but he'll hold your hand through it. The Bible says he's near to the brokenhearted. If you've been waiting, maybe it's a job. Maybe it's a, a, a prodigal to come home. Maybe, I don't know what you're waiting for this morning. We're, we're all waiting for different things, and maybe it's been a long time. Look to Jesus, because listen, 
it could happen when you look to Jesus. You won't have a blue Christmas anymore. When you look to Jesus, instead of a holly jolly Christmas, you can have a holy Christmas. It could happen. It will happen. Look to Jesus. Look to the one who can give you a joy that is greater than any joy you'll ever know. A joy that comes from knowing the one and looking to the one who is the reason for the season. Rejoice, church. Rejoice. Jesus is born. Emmanuel. God is with us. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the hope that you bring. Thank you for the miracles that you've done, that you're doing, that you're going to do. I pray for those that are here this morning that have been waiting for so long. God, give them hope this morning as they look to you. And God, we need some miracles. God, thank you that you do miracles. Lord, I pray for this Christmas season that it would be a holy Christmas for this church and for those that are here this morning. In Jesus' name.